dialogue or Cold War, Europe and the Ukraine conflict. In the interview, Polish Foreign Minister Jego Szczytina. Minister, what do you see as the biggest challenge facing Europe? Security. That's the most important thing we have to think about. For centuries, generations of people have dreamed of a secure Europe, of a Europe which is developing, where people can live in prosperity, and of a Europe without borders, which is something so many people have wanted for so long. But now there's a question mark hanging over that security with regard to what's happening in eastern Ukraine right now. But also with a view toward developments in the Middle East or North Africa. All that means we have to alter our definition of security. How do you approach the current crisis in Europe? What's Poland's solution? Polish foreign policy is part of European foreign policy. We try to influence that. Poland has to redefine its foreign policy and ensure that it's effective. There is no answer to the current global dangers other than a common, successful European policy on security and defense. A policy which recognizes dangers and contributes to finding solutions. When we talk about dangers in Europe, then we're talking about the situation in Ukraine, the annexation of Crimea, the aggression in the Donbas and Luhansk, and the other steps that Russia is taking in Ukraine. What do you see as Germany's role in solving the crisis? Germany is a very important country in the European Union and Europe. It has global influence. It's important that Germany flexes its economic muscle, but it also needs to use its skills and its knowledge about the international situation and apply its values as well. It's important that Germany uses all those tools to provide more stability and security in Europe. It would be the worst possible development if Europe were brought to the brink of a military conflict. History teaches us that. What do you say to the opinion that we wouldn't have this conflict if we had recognized Russian concerns earlier and taken them seriously? It's hard to say. Who could have imagined the current situation just a couple of years ago? Who could have imagined an armed conflict which has so far claimed the lives of 4,000 people? In the same way, no one thought there would be a financial crisis like the one which unfolded in 2008 and hit so many countries around the world. The democracies of the world must prepare for such challenges in the future. We have to find answers to situations like these. That's why we created the EU and why it's been expanded. It's there to lead Europe successfully and to stress the principles of cooperation, peaceful coexistence and being good neighbours. If someone gives up these principles, if they no longer think of common bonds, then they become isolated. That's what Russia is doing right now. Europe and the free world must speak out clearly against this breach of international law, the use of arms. We have to be clear that the policies followed by Russia in 2014 are not acceptable. We're in a difficult situation. Do you agree with Mikhail Gorbachev that we're on the brink of a new Cold War? It is a real danger, but I don't believe history will repeat itself. The Cold War was the result of the division of Europe into spheres of influence of two superpowers. We have a different situation now compared with the late 1940s. 
There are numerous possibilities for cooperation and dialogue. It would be disastrous if we did not use them and ended up regressing to a state of war, whether it's a cold war or a real one. Neither would end well. We have to do all we can to prevent that. The most important thing, and that is vital for the future, is that we succeed in convincing Russia to move away from its aggressive behavior. Policies like the ones they are following in eastern Ukraine should not be tolerated. A few days ago, Russia expelled Polish diplomats. How are relations? They aren't good. I don't know any European country that has good relations with Russia at the moment. But we don't want an escalation. We believe that the sanctions against Russia should remain in place and that they will be effective. Still, we want to maintain dialogue with Russia. And yet we have to make it clear that we oppose the breach of international law by Russia and that we cannot accept the policies that they are pursuing. The situation in Ukraine has pushed other problems facing Europe into the background, for example migrants from North Africa. How should we deal with that issue? That's one of the most important problems which needs a solution. We are on the right path. The EU needs to help improve the economic situation in the countries the migrants come from. That's the priority. And we want to support those countries which are trying to transition from dictatorships to democracies. Tunisia is a good example of a country which is developing its own ideas and is a good partner for Europe. European companies are investing there and creating jobs. Tunisia is dealing with this process very reasonably. It's a totally different case in Libya. We have to support the countries and regions the migrants arrive in. Like southern Italy, Lampedusa, Malta or Spain. The problem shouldn't be theirs alone. The EU should deal with it jointly. Do you agree with your predecessor or former president Lech Wałęsa, who said they were more worried by German passivity than by German leadership? Germany is an active partner and has introduced a lot of different ideas. For example, the cooperation among the members of what's called the Weimar Triangle uniting Germany with Poland and France. It's shaping a new policy towards Europe's neighbours, including policy decisions regarding countries to the east and south. It's important that this group shape and influence European policy. Our three countries have vast experience and a variety of perspectives. In the past, we've often proven our ability to come up with good solutions. The Weimar Triangle offers a good chance to redefine European policy. Don't you feel a little uneasy when Germany and France hold joint talks with Ukraine and Poland is left out? I felt that way until a few days ago. But President Poroshenko is now saying that in his view, the Weimar Triangle would provide the best framework for a resolution of the conflict. It would be worth restarting the talks within that circle. 
conflict in Europe Wschodniej i warto do tego formatu When the situation on the Maidan was at its most difficult in February this year. It was the foreign ministers of Germany, France and Poland who prevented even more bloodshed. There will be a new head of the European Union on December 1st. What priorities will Donald Tusk take on? He will place more emphasis on the viewpoints of the new Europe, that's for sure. I expect that he'll be quicker to recognize dangers and conflicts in Eastern Europe. Donald Tusk stands for decisive policies, for ideas and dynamism. There'll be no shirking of difficult questions and big challenges. Poland has proven itself under Donald Tusk's leadership. He led the country through hard times, like the 2009 economic crisis. It will be a big challenge for him and he'll bring new impetus to Europe. That's good for Europe and Poland. Last question. You're known for playing chess. How similar is it to diplomacy? I like chess, but I prefer speed chess. You play fast. I'm impatient by nature, but I'm working on it. There are similarities, but politics is a lot more demanding than chess. Sure, you need to act decisively in both, you need to plan ahead and be quick to see what's coming. That all helps in politics. Foreign Minister, thank you for your time. Thank you.